Hello everyone, welcome to Yasumi, the tech excellence. I am not just bringing you the top trendy topics, I want you to become the master of it. So today it will be a deep dive discussion on the next level of AI. Can AI break the encryption? Let's listen to what Thomas Boyd says. I also got the opportunity to become a speaker spotlight with potentialism due to his um, invitation. So let's explore who's Thomas Boyd and then his topic. Hi Thomas, I want you to introduce yourself first to my audience. In the, the leading AI projects of the region, so of, of Germany and of entire Central Europe. So I've been working in top governmental projects, I've been doing several semantic search projects for corporations, um, projects around the electronic health card, around um, the, the email, for example, which is uh, the digital form of a recommended letter. Um, so, so with the attachments stored via knowledge management and access that way. And uh, many big data projects and uh, also AI for cybersecurity, AI for medical technology, for example, for, for Siemens Healthineers um, and uh, basically all AI data science types of projects. Many um, fraud detection projects for banks and insurances. Uh, and the like. So, so I really have 20 years of professional experience in AI, which hardly anybody has uh, otherwise, because uh, there were m many years where AI was not that fashionable as it is today. Okay, so actually appreciate your time and with your experience and expertise in AI, we can um, have deep dive discussions. Uh, so let's dive into the topic so with the rapid uh, advancements in AI uh, what do you see as the next level for this technology yeah that's complex so first of all the, the difficulty is that large language models or LMMs large multimodal models that they seem to be converging to pretty much what open AI is, has and that the costs for creating them are typically in the billions, at least for the original models, and that the advantage that they create is just a fraction of that typically. So what customers are willing to pay for that. And uh, that shows that uh, these LLMs and LMMs have come to nearly a standstill because the incremental costs to train them to get even better results are so high that the, the additional incremental value created is uh, much smaller in comparison. And that has led to a search to the next level of AI, what that could be. Um, and um, there's multiple things uh, that, um, um, that, could, uh, that this could be about. And I could present some slides on this if you would like to, or should I first uh, explain orally? Yeah, you can go through slides and explain, Thomas. Yeah, okay. Then uh, I started with this help. So actually what sparked the interest is the OpenAI's leak about Qualia QSTAR and, and what it could be about. Uh, so how much information do we, uh, or how much time do we have? Uh, around 30. Minutes. Yeah, okay. your yeah. yeah. So, well, then, then I could say so. We have, for example, the situation that AI has slightly surpassed human abilities over the last years, but only slightly surpassed the baseline at gigantic costs and only in, in specific disciplines like visual reasoning or image classification visual common sense reasoning, natural language inter inference, and so on, basically what ChatGPT is doing. So there we have some impressive progress. And then we had this basically Sam Altman's uh, dismissal from OpenAI and the possible background. Um, so there several things came to light. 
And for example, there was information that the ciphertext only approach was able to break AES 192 bit. However, this is all not 100% confirmed. So um, some old man said there's an unfortunate leak. However, he didn't confirm which leak is valid. And uh, another leak said that they have a version which self-modified and which changed a lot in two months. And he was scared and said, God help us if uh, if this AI yeah, gets into the wild. And uh, um, as he has so many changes, like 78 million checks in, in four seconds um, over a big compute cluster. So it's an interesting part. And then another leak talked about energy-based models here and uh, yeah, how it could be used um, like to train the system, um, could lead to better dialogue systems. So this is a summary by, by ChatGPT itself about, <laughs> about uh, what ChatGPT uh, uh, next level could be. So energy-based model, uh, thinking in abstract, finding the best thought, turning thoughts into words, so everything optimized, training to get better with uh, the QSTAR algorithm, and uh, so it could lead to a net next level AI. Um, and there's another leak, um, say um, he has been researching AI self-play and reasoning in power in games like po uh, power and diplomacy. Um, so it so it could be a technology similar to AlphaGo, but bringing the whole thing to the next level. So the leak or the leaks seem to be valid also. And um, let's go to how oh, the other thought is even if you think the leak is maybe not valid, one should ask. What if, so what if this is valid? So and what if this changes the entire direction of AI? So what if AI does self-optimize and then uh, basically goes beyond what we humans can understand? Um, what if it cuts the human developers out of the loop and so on? Um, what if big tech lab managers cover it up? So, so that's actually, um, one should not dismiss it completely. So an initial analysis in the first days showed that it could be around this. And actually, most who think they are somewhat experts in these domains, they proposed it could be around these uh, these techniques. So everything of thoughts, that means chain, graph, and tree of thought, process reward model um, is a subdiscipline. Then they could just GPT-4 to score all vertices of a tree of reinforcement learning with AI feedback and um, and also with human feedback. That's the other alternative of reinforcement learning. Then this Q learning coming out of deep learning to optimize everything. Then reinforcement learning, policy neural networks and value neural networks, possibly a three model and metaverse information to understand the real world and to possibly model emotions into pain. Like we as uh, as babies and children, we learn through what is painful, yeah? by, by touching things that are painful or, or hurting us. Then there could be some strategy, optional analysis and planning, the search at play. So a search, taking all of this into uh, account. Some optimization for math and logic and ground truth. And there are actually ways how to incorporate math and logic into deep learning even. That can be done by explicitly setting the weights in a deep learning framework. Um, then there's an interesting approach of synthetic training data because uh, the big tech companies have run out of freely available text data. So they scrape the entire internet of what is usable and still don't have enough. Then there's model transfers, pruning and adaptation, which, which is interesting. So one can take, for example, all open source models and combine them all together into, and, and, and get a better model out of them. And there is just a paper out on this. And then there are interesting techniques like graph convolutional networks, also in short confnets, and reprogramming itself, 
which is dangerous, of course, but, but in, uh, energy-based models. Or in structured form, basically these elements, that was the initial assumption what it is about. So this is pretty much the c categories agent level or outside reinforcement learning level, graphics and semantics level, learning and training types, the neural network level, the prompting level, the other tree graph chain of thought, the assessment when, so of, a, of a state, uh, of a plan, with these techniques and then, then parsing this dense X retrievals and factoids. And then some other interesting parts like metamorphic AI, so with transformation targets and self reprogramming. So that was also mentioned in the in one of the valid sounding leaks that um, one has here an, an, an input and a perturbation and improvement at perturbed uh, input then, and then can map this to the model or the output space and what this means. And then, for example, typos can be modeled that way or blurring in computer vision uh, can be modeled. So different problems or imperfections can be modeled through this metamorphic AI and then be solved in the model space. Uh, and this is advantageous. Yeah. Then there's process models and there's an interesting paper. Let's verify step by step. Yeah, also given here it's um so it's about ranking all the steps of, of a reasoning framework. So for example, for a plan of things, um, one can rank each state after uh, after each step was executed. And then like playing chess, assess what are good states, where do you want to go, or what are good outcomes in the end. And then even possibly backtrack if the outcome is not so good. Yeah, or also in math they are used. So for example, so so this is the internal thinking of a, of a math problem solver. And then here, for example, it made a mistake or something not so optimal, the red line here. And then it decided to to undo that. So that this is not, not such a good state. So it, you see it here with the red, the red set face here. Also, uh, do you have any questions so far? Uh, should I uh, go on and show uh, the other in the techniques? Uh, yeah, if you can. Yeah, then uh, just give a quick overview of the other things. Yeah, Then there's an interesting idea is um, Monte Carlo tree, tree Search, also called MCTS. And um, so these are techniques from AlphaGo that can be brought to the next level. Mm. And then the point is to to implement a synergy of all of these steps. And that probably requires several million lines of code and probably several versions and several attempts. So it means that one really has to find top programmers who program several million lines of code in maybe three to five iterations, maybe more, to then come up with a great synergy among all of these algorithms. And it probably has to be completely new source code. Um, so, for example, also taking into account a growth ground truth signal, what is really true, not falling victim to fake news or false facts, alternative facts or so. Then there's new ideas about deep reinforcement learning around self-play and look-ahead planning. So I'm basically detailing out all the ideas I showed before in rough ways. So self plays the idea that an agent itself can improve itself, so for example, by trying to do chess playing. Look ahead planning also is known from chess, for example, that the for some chess programs, one say it can plan seven or ten steps ahead. Um, this is the technique behind this. Um, and technically, this is called model predictive control, MPC. Yeah, all this MCT is. Then there's uh, the idea to model creativity, for example, the transfer of principles or ideas from one domain to another. Um, 
So these ideas can come from experimenting, from observing, from analyzing, testing, from explanation attempts, critique, a deep understanding. Then they can be transferred to other domains, like for example, considering knowledge or heuristics, and then look at the search space in that new domain, what is possible, what needed, uh, what is needed in which are promising avenues, um, and test out the most promising actions or options. Um, yeah, planning, analyzing constraints and working around them, data science and pattern detection, this all comes together here. Then it should be ethical, of course. And then there's interesting alignment ideas like axiomatic alignment and uh, around heuristics and imperatives and positive attractor states for the ethics part. And this is an, an interesting video that describes this. So then different AI acts have come out. One of the first was the EU AI Act. And we see that most models are not very compliant with it. So some only have eight out of 48, for example, mm -hmm. here, or, or even five. And even the best models are at around 20 or 36, 27 to 36 out of 48 oh. points. So all not very compliant yet. And this is how compliance can be broken down into data compliance, compute model and deployment compliance. And then there's uh, various regulations around this. And another important topic is theory of mind for AI, where AI tries to understand what we as humans think and how we think and what, what we tell about ourselves and what we don't tell. Um, for example, here's an overview. Um, it, AI can infer objectives objectives of entities around them and then um, it should be able to understand the importance of the awareness and the different consequences it lead, um, it lead to um, you know, communicate with human things better explain decisions in various languages and helping the user so us human beings to understand um, the robot theory of mind AI system should be able to understand the intention of other similar robots or theory of mind embedded systems and of humans, of course. Or one can rank this. The easiest is to understand the wanting of us humans, then to understand the thinking, what we really think, understand that seeing leads to knowing, for example, in, in learning in the metaverse, Then, but it gets harder with false beliefs of, of people and especially with hidden feelings to understand them. And for full AI models, one needs the full range of human emotions in psychology and psychiatry. Yeah, there's a, a synergy around the implementation of probabilistic knowledge graphs and graph, or also called graph neural networks and large language models. And um, the key ideas are around this. So these are, are the knowledge graphs built from, from text. So text graph and knowledge graphs. So basically this is on the syntactic level more, words of a sentence, and this is the meaning of these words. And this is how they can be analyzed here yeah, as text sequence and as entity sequence brought into an LLM and then used for further processing. For example, with this mask-based approach. However, the mask-based approach is really not the most efficient approach anymore. I have more on this later. So here we see again the knowledge graph and how that can also be attention be calculated on the knowledge graph as well as on the, the text level. And then based on the motto, attention is all you need, use the a transformer approach to create text outputs and knowledge graph outputs. Or also combine it in this way, um, map the attention from the large language model to the knowledge graph in this uh, Graph and uh, we'll have a joint reasoning layer here, and then some pruning and get an answer from this. So the open AI system is called Qualia QSTAR, and the Qualia name comes from James Pustyowski, who proposed this that nouns, so this is noun semantics, have a constitutive semantics, which is what does it consist of, or proper parts like material, weight. Um, compound objects, 
And the formal aspect, the distinguishing features in the larger domain. So this is a smaller domain. This is a larger domain. Orientation, magnitude, shape, dimensionality, color, position, and so on. And then also dynamic properties uh, along the time. So agentive, what brings something about? So how is it created? Uh, or what causal chain leads to its existence? Who is the creator of the, the knife or so? And then um, the telic part, the purpose of function, what is the purpose of the knife, for example, of other objects, what are the built-in functions like cutting, um, having a weight and uh, threatening somebody, aims and activities around this. And this has been proposed around 25 years ago or 30 years ago. And then there's other semantics like web semantics by Tony Davis from Stanford. He has basically these, these proto roles of actor, undergoer, figure, ground, effect, means, and accompanying event. And one can see this here uh, to sell goods and to hear the payment of money. It's the inverse operation. And this is linguistically modeled like this. And this here stands for noun phrase with the function subject, noun phrase with the function object, and prepositional phrase with the function complement. In the sentence, the seller sells good to the goods to the buyer. So this would be semantic analyzed like this, using heavy lexicalist semantics like um, minimal recursion semantics by Stanford, or um, often associated with HPSG, head-driven phrase structure grammar. So and this can also be mapped. So this can be mapped into knowledge graphs. Also, mm -hmm. initially, it was called typed feature structures (TFS), and then wrapped into XML structures. Typically, nowadays, wrapped into knowledge graphs. And so we can combine these semantic formulations with neural models. And this can especially model logic, formula, constraints, rules, functions, world knowledge. 3D physics models, word, word files even, and elements of planning, which neural networks can't do well. So these are, it closes exactly the gaps that neural networks have, uh, also deep learning. Also around um, hallucinations. And it can we have create synergies possibly and correct it, can be corrected, adjusted in all directions. And these probabilistic knowledge graphs they can be held so that they're explainable and don't have hallucinations, uh, which is the, the big um, weakness or vul vulnerability of neural networks. Yeah, then have more on symbolic methods, especially planning constraints, rules, and functions are interesting. Combining them with the theory of mind is very interesting, and they also form in a synergy with everything of thought. So we can bring in into this cause effect knowledge with modalities um, where we did, for, for example, some projects for um, for companies like ThyssenKrupp who have um, much machinery, which often breaks. They want to find out why does machinery break? Uh, what are key reasons and what are the modalities, the causal chains around this? Um, and then use that those insights to minimize things breaking and to, uh, get higher quality in production of their machines and choose better quality suppliers. Then there's the topic of embodied AI. That means 3D models, for example, in the metaverse, real world information may be combined with pain emotions on the entire th theory of mind model. So there, the metaverse could be used as a training element. And then Jan Le Kuhn has come out with um, Many interesting ideas just uh, in the last days. So he found that autoregressive large language models are doomed. Exactly the problem that, that basically everybody else has, has seen. And for example, this diverges exponentially and is not fixable. So if uh, this n gets bigger here. So uh, no matter how small this epsilon is, uh, it it uh, will still diverge exponentially. So he has this cognitive model, basically here a green world model, 
um, around which there's a short-term memory a configurator, an actor, perception, a critic with intrinsic costs and an entire cost model, and an actor here, and then act, acting on the world and perceiving what happens with these actions are key elements. And this can be modeled technically like this. So perception have a world model here with actions, um, latent elements that influence it and various cost models. Then the AI checks which costs are incurred at, and under which conditions and tries to find an action sequence that minimizes the objectives and also minimizes the cost because uh, technically model predictive control. Ah, and then there's different um, algorithms like gradient-based methods, graph search, dynamic programming, a star algorithm, and um, um, this Mon Monte Carlo tree search and, and other methods. Then this, he detailed this out. So uh, more complex states. This is a bit complex. However, with an example, it becomes clear. So how do you plan going from New York to Paris? Um, so, so he sits at New York University in his office, and then he can go down the street, grab it, um, get a taxi, um, and then check the costs and time needed for that. Um, and then it's different decisions. Does he take a taxi or a train? Which airport and so on? Which airline? And then assesses the consequences of the decisions. And through this analysis, he found out that one should ab abandon generative models in favor of joint embedding architectures like his JPA. So these are big insights. So this means that billions of dollars of investments are wasted basically in, in generative models because these new architectures are more powerful. One should also mostly abandon probabilistic models in favor of energy-based models. However, one can remodel these probabilistic models so that not the entire money is wasted on them. One sh should abandon constructive methods in favor of regularized methods and abandon standard reinforcement learning with model predictive control. This, this is basically this model, model predictive uh, control. Um, or with this one variant of it called objective driven AI with hierarchical planning. So and this is this newly proposed JPA architecture, basically a more formalized version of this entire planning. And this can be detailed out um, now in various ways. Key elements here are about maximizing information content so that the basically the input for learning has high quality. This is what that means to mini then here to minimize certain information content in, at these other steps, um, then minimize the predi prediction error, and uh, then here maximize the information content. So meaning, for example, that these predictions should be focused on some minimal information content, so highly focused predictions, but otherwise have maximal information content. And technically, this, this can be calculated with covariance, for example or with uh, absolute values and so on. And so variance and covariance, essentially. Then there's energy-based models, which model an energy landscape like this and optimize this energy landscape with this function. And these EBMs are more powerful than probabilistic models. Or the latter can be modeled as a special case of the first ones. So in AI, it has now become a standard to model everything as EBM. And then there's two variants of this, the contrastive method here at the top and the regularized method here at the bottom. So they have these advantages or disadvantages. These regularized models are also called architectural models. And um, yeah, so this gets a little technical. So one should use a regularization term that measures the volume of space that has low energy and use sparse autoencoder. This is pretty much the insight. Um, yeah, the other mechanism here is to, one sees this, one pushes down data points. So the optimal data has low energy. So everything is here optimized for a minimum. 
that's why one has here a push down of energy of data points. Um, but pushes up on chosen locations, which, which are suboptimal. Um, and uses these techniques from metric learning, CMEs, nets, adversarial generators, or GANs are also being used. So this then gets technical. However, an important insight is that this architecture cannot collapse of prediction regression. However, other key architectures can collapse. And thus, it's, uh, one has to be careful when one wants to use them or not use them at all. Um, so basically, these problems are then open to solve, and also these in the second part. Um, so that's what current AI, at least at Mad Matter, where Jan Lekan works, um, what he's working on. And um, yeah, the general criticism of AI training uh, meaning mostly large language models that still can only predict the next token. And uh, they have this epsilon error, which with the exponentially big ends becomes very big. One needs terabytes or, or, or petabytes of high quality label training data um, to avoid catastrophic forgetting. And uh, this costs gigantic amounts uh, for human labeling and also then for the machine learning on GPUs. So this did cost OpenAI probably more than a than a billion euros or dollars so far, probably multiple billions. They got around 11 billion dollars uh, for that, and and they need it because it's so costly. So meaning, as I said initially, the the use cases are just not profitable. Um, yeah, and even for for other classical companies, so for us as consulting company, it still typically means multiple million US dollars complete an AI project with deep learning. And that's uh, too much for many classical corporations because it's also risky in their view. Thus, we need better approaches and algorithms that get better results and are also cheaper to implement. Yeah, somebody even pointed out that uh, this, these LLMs employ similar effects as a, a psychic who's doing con. So it looks like a con game also. They pretty much have the same steps. So there's a subjective validation loop, for example, here on both sides, the subjective validation loop. The mark is tested, which is the mark is the, the person who is being um, manipulated. Um, and then the, the person is convinced that it works. However, current LLMs have some elements of trickery, basically, or of a con game. Then what's worth mentioning, the leak says that OpenAI um, used this Qualia Q-Star system to implement tau analysis technique and crypto analysis techniques from books and then managed to break the advanced encryption standard with 192 bits encryption, which would make most internet encryption insecure, especially SSL certificates and SSL encryption like as we know it from HTTPS, from uh, from S MIME and so on, and um, yeah, these these are details from some other leaks about this project Tundra, which explored this initially, and now it seems to be solved by OpenAI, which um, could have higher security implications. Meaning, we could get hacked, or pretty much the entire internet could get hacked. And um, there could be major hacking attacks in the world and, and, and all kinds of propaganda, impersonation and so on. Then uh, putting it all together, what this could be, or what are at the same time promising directions to reduce hallucinations and get to the next level of AI, which is uh, a synergistic combination of the techniques presented ab above. And now I'm, I'm just um, mentioning them again I also have some other additional points, which is basically multimodal deep learning. So meaning multimodal audio, video, and text um, to teach them also how to ad ideate through hallucination possibly, but on, in other respects, minimize hallucination. Um, use graph convolutional networks or probabilistic knowledge graphs as described then a synergistic combination of key enabling technologies like this um, everything of thought 
meta GPT or any tool like agent systems, then there's interesting upgrades, retrieval augmented generation, rec chain, length chain, llama index, and so on, um, transformers, encoders. Um, um, yeah, then we have programmed attention, for example, RESP flip and tracer RESP, improved basic technology around switch transformers and mixed up expert models. Um, then we can integrate the best systems in the domains, like computer algebra systems, like Mathematica, and there's free alternatives, um, KL1 systems, and so on. Um, knowledge representations, possibly optimizations for creativity, agentive large language models, controlling the knowledge and auto-optimizing things. And um, you could have nonlinear planning of of those actions. Linear planning would be constrained and non-linear planning is, is a non-constrained variant. Assess the outcomes in the QSTAR manner. That's probably also why it's called QSTAR. We could have analogic reasoning and transferring of ideas and principles from one domain to another, possibly genetic algorithms or some evolutionary AI element, for example, as critique in exchange of ideas, elements, components or strains. Of elements. So in, in biology, it's called strains of, of genes. Yeah. Um, we can employ a plug-in principle so that we have as plugins various logic components, for example, for math, for programming, for data science, possibly, and all specialty domains. We could have databases, episodic memory. Uh, that's a special type of memory for consistent stories, logic, principles, heuristics, and patterns. We could explore synthetic data more and some learning and optimizations like long LLM lingua, LoRa, um, and uh, yeah, maybe later various improvements like liquid neural networks, capsule networks, hierarchical temporal network, uh, memory, sorry, um, GC forest, Q lattices, RIMS. So these are basically new AI models that have been proposed. Um, this LoRa stands for low range adaptation, a, a training method um, that's very promising and uh, maybe later in the ability to self-modify, but they should be careful because then an AI could possibly escape from and, and get into the wild of the internet. Uh, and that could become dangerous. And then we could possibly have smart visualizations and generally find synergies between the ideas of the five, five main AI tribes, which are symbolists, Bayesians, connectionists, so this is what current deep learning is about, evolutionaries and, and uh, analogizers. Currently, we're mainly in the connectionist uh, domain with deep learning and large language models. However, these other four domains have some interesting insights. Yeah, in the future, we will probably have many universal virtual assistants and there, um, we would interact with the entire digital world mediated by AI assistants. And that is why they become extremely important and powerful. Uh, it's like having super smart staff working uh, for people. And that's why these platforms really must be open source or use this, uh, humans lose control. Because otherwise we're completely um, cut off from reality, basically, if we have these uh, systems do everything for us and don't have the control of this anymore. So this is why such open source platforms are necessary. This is actually also what, what Jan Le Kun is saying, and, um, and they must not be regulated out of existence. Yeah, and this is an opportunity for an open source platform for AI and global strategy for the good of humanity. And actually, we, um, as as Compre, as well as our non-profit uh, potentialism, Pack and Flow has several solutions about this. Is essentially around collaborative, ethical creation and co-creation, curation, training, monitoring, and benefiting from AIs, personal AI-based coaching and mentoring, efficient cooperation and teamwork, finding the most efficient, promising solutions. For example, for green transition, how to Innovate out of the many crises in which we are in, discussing negotiation and voting around possible trade-offs to avoid mass unemployment, cataclysms, and misery. And there are already some um, solutions for this in potentialism, for example. 
and by amplifying human intelligence with AI. So this can bring about a new era of enlightenment, um, which should not be monopolized by evil billionaires and could be a new renaissance from humanity. And this is a basic architecture what this could look like. So this is the other key ideas. So this is a user interface, a plugin architecture, persistence layer, and some here, essentially. And for example, then special components. So for example, here are the, the Qualio Q stars, like key functionalities, um, coaching, um, and a central controller to control the AI system. Those various UIs and knowledge editor plugins and so on. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see how I can end this. Yeah, so it was a very in detail uh, description yeah. about this next level AI. And I like this architecture and the way you explained it as well. Uh, thank you very much, Thomas. So, yeah, thank uh, you. You're welcome. Yeah, so it was really a in detail introduction. And um, as the as we are going to wrap up today's conversation, uh, what key takeaways uh, you can give to the audience who will be watching this video about this next level AI and the challenges we will face? Yeah. So I, I think that the key opportunities are are still to to maybe. Um, use some LLM API to, to have implement some incremental idea or use an open source model or otherwise come together to implement the next level of AI, like in the directions that I've shown. So we should do this as quickly as possible and as ethically and controlled as possible because otherwise um, we could end up in mass unemployment or in a new AI ice age uh, so that uh, yeah, our or AI knowledge that we acquired could become useless for, for a few years until the big corporations have implemented it. So we are starting a community around potentialism or per conflow in Google that and we have a YouTube channel. Also, you can join there and get in contact. There are also WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, Discord groups, all of these where you can join and we can build this together. Um, that would be great. So an, an alternative to what the billionaires are doing an ethical one. That's my big vision. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas Potter. As you told, I'll be sharing your uh, uh, LinkedIn profile and the potentialism, the YouTube channel as well. So anyone who's watching, they can uh, reach to you, reach out to you, your social media, so that we, as you told, we can build this together. And um, we'll have this kind of deep conversations in future as well. Appreciate and huge thank to you for again for joining with me today, Thomas. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a, a great day and all the best. Yeah, great day to you as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. See you. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the conversation today. If you like it, do hit the like button and you can share it as well. Also hit the notification bell icon and subscribe to my YouTube channel Yasumi and stay tuned for trendy discussions on the topics we need to talk. If you have any questions, you can do comment on the video. So I'll be taking those during my next conversations with the global links like this. Thank you very much. Until I see you again. Bye-bye.